In this video, I'm going to show you the real threats to NVIDIA's dominance. And spoiler alert, it's not AMD, it's not Intel, and it's not what Wall Street is currently worried about. Understanding what could actually disrupt NVIDIA will help you invest smarter over the next decade, whether you own NVIDIA stock or not. First, I'll show you why NVIDIA's 90% share is actually more defensible than most investors realize. Then I'll reveal the three technologies that could legitimately challenge them, not by making better GPUs, but by fundamentally changing how AI works. Finally, I'll show you what I think the stocks are to watch, which could benefit regardless of which technology wins. Here's something that will put you ahead of almost every Wall Street analyst. The same mistake that caused investors to miss Google's dominance in search is happening right now with Nvidia. Back in the 2000s, everyone thought Yahoo or Microsoft would win search. They were all building better search engines, faster crawlers, and more sophisticated algorithms. But Google didn't win with a better search engine. They won by fundamentally changing what search meant with an advertising model that made search profitable at scale. And here's the critical insight. Nvidia won't be disrupted by someone making a better GPU. They'll be disrupted if they're disrupted at all by someone fundamentally changing what AI acceleration means. Let's jump into it. Most investors think Nvidia's competitive advantage comes from CUDA, their software platform that developers use to write GPU accelerated code. And they're right, but that's only scratching the surface. When Nvidia announces a new GPU architecture like Blackwell or Rubin, they're not just announcing one chip. They're actually announcing at least six different technologies that all work together. The GPU itself, a CPU, a data processing unit, NVLink switch chips to connect GPUs inside a single rack, and two different networking solutions, InfiniBand and Spectrum X Ethernet to connect multiple racks together. This is critical for investors to understand. While AMD is trying to compete on GPU performance and Intel is trying to compete on CPUs, Nvidia is building an entire ecosystem where all of these components are co-designed to work together. It's like comparing someone who makes great car engines to someone who designs, manufactures, and optimizes the entire vehicle, engine, transmission, suspension, and aerodynamics as one integrated system. But this is where it gets even better for NVIDIA shareholders. Their latest innovation, NVIDIA Fusion, is a special chiplet that allows non-NVIDIA processors like Google's TPUs and Amazon's GPUs or Amazon's custom chips to integrate directly into NVIDIA's infrastructure. That means companies like Google, Microsoft, and Meta can use their own custom chips while still buying NVIDIA's networking and management software. NVIDIA doesn't need to have 100% GPU market share. They're building the infrastructure that connects everyone's chips together. That's why $7 billion of NVIDIA's revenue last quarter came from networking products alone. NVIDIA isn't just selling picks and shovels in the AI gold rush. They're selling the roads, the power grids, and the entire supply chain that makes the gold rush possible. Now let's talk about the real threats to NVIDIA's dominance. And I need to be crystal clear here. I'm not talking about threats, which I think could happen in 2025 or 2026. I'm gonna talk about technologies that could fundamentally reshape the AI landscape, but this will be 2028, 2030 or beyond. Here's an analogy that makes this super simple to understand. Imagine you need to move furniture. A GPU is like renting a pickup truck it's flexible and can handle all kinds of loads. You can move furniture, haul construction materials, or transport equipment. It's versatile. But what if you only need to move one specific type of furniture every single day in massive quantities? Eventually, you'd want a specialized moving truck designed specifically for that job. It'll be faster, use less gas, and cost less to operate. That's what custom chips called ASICs do for AI. Broadcom, for example, just announced a $10 billion partnership with OpenAI to design custom chips specifically for chat applications. These chips can be two to five times more efficient than NVIDIA's GPUs, but only for text-based tasks. They can't do graphics, they can't do simulations, they can't handle video, just text. Right now, designing these custom chips costs hundreds of millions of dollars and takes about two years. So only the biggest tech companies, Google, Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, and now OpenAI can afford them. But here's the potential disruption. What if AI tools could make chip design 10 times faster and 10 times cheaper? What if every mid-sized AI company can suddenly afford their own custom chips? Think about it like this. If specialized moving trucks suddenly become as cheap as pickup trucks, a lot fewer people would rent pickup trucks. That's the threat to Nvidia. Not today, but potentially in five to 10 years time. The second threat comes from a completely different approach called neuromorphic computing. 
And the easiest way to understand this is to think about how your brain works versus how computers work. Your computer and Nvidia's GPUs work like a factory assembly line. Information gets sorted in one place, the memory then travels down a conveyor belt to another, the processor, where it gets worked on, then it travels back to storage. This back and forth movement happens billions of times per second and wastes a ton of energy. Your brain doesn't work like that. In your brain, the storage and processing is happening in the same place, your neurons. When a neuron receives a signal, it processes that information right there and then, and immediately passes it to the next neuron. No conveyor belt, no wasted energy from moving things back and forth. Neuromorphic chips try to copy how your brain works. Companies like Intel and IBM are building chips where artificial neurons only fire when they receive enough inputs, just like real neurons in your brain. This makes them incredibly energy efficient. And we're talking 100 to 1000 times more efficient than traditional chips for certain tasks. Right now, these brain light chips can't handle the heavy lifting needed to train large AI models like ChatGPT. But they're amazing at things like pattern recognition, processing sensor data, and making quick decisions with very little power. That's why they're perfect for things like smart cameras, robots, and devices at the edge of networks. But here's the big question. What if brain light chips could get good enough to handle more complex AI tasks? What if by 2030, most AI inference, that's when AI generates answers to your questions, happens on neuromorphic chips because they're so much more efficient. The global AI market is expected to grow 19 times larger by 2034. Even if 20% of that market shifts to brain like computing, that's hundreds of billions of dollars that Nvidia's current chips can't capture. Okay, let's talk about the third threat. The third threat requires us to think a bit differently and about quantum computing. Most people think quantum computers will replace regular computers. A lot of people think that's not even happening inside of our lifetimes. Instead, the real opportunity is quantum computers and regular computers working together as a team. So here's a simple analogy. Imagine you're planning a massive road trip across 50 cities and you want to find the absolute best route that saves the most time and gas. A regular computer would have to check millions of possible routes one by one. It might take days or even weeks to find the optimal route. A quantum computer can check many possible routes simultaneously because of something called quanta superposition. Basically, it can explore multiple solutions at the same time. So problems that would take regular computers thousands of years can potentially be solved in minutes. But quantum computers are terrible at most normal computing tasks. They have to operate at temperatures colder than outer space, they make lots of errors, and they can only run for tiny fractions of a second before falling apart. They're like a Formula One race car, amazing on racetracks, useless for grocery shopping. That's why the future isn't quantum computers replacing GPUs, it's quantum processors handling very specific hard problems like optimization, drug discovery, or complex simulations, while GPUs handle everything else. Nvidia already sees this coming. That's why Jensen announced something called NVQ Link, a special connector that lets quantum processors plug directly into Nvidia's GPU systems. It's a brilliant strategy. Nvidia is saying, we don't need to build quantum computers. We'll just make sure that when quantum computing works, it needs our GPUs to function. But here's the risk. If quantum computing advances way faster than expected, companies like IBM are targeting 100,000 qubit quantum systems by 2023. That's a way of measuring their speed. Right now, quantum computers have maybe a few hundred qubits, but if IBM hits even 10% of their roadmap, we could see quantum systems handling tasks that currently need thousands of GPUs. And here's what gets really interesting. The companies leading quantum computing, IBM, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, are Nvidia's biggest customers today. If quantum AI integration works, they might buy fewer GPUs in the future. So here's the million dollar question. If these three technologies could legitimately disrupt Nvidia, what should you do as an investor? Well, here's my take. These disruptions are real, but they're at least five to 10 years away minimum in my opinion. In the meantime, Nvidia's revenue is still growing 50 to 60% year over year, even though they're already a four to $5 trillion company. Missing out on that growth because you're worried about theoretical disruption in 2030 would be like selling Amazon in 2010 because you were worried about future competition. So here's what I think the smart move is. Don't try to predict which technology will win. Instead, watch the companies that benefit regardless of which path AI takes. So let me show you which stocks I think you should keep on your radar. First up is TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Here's why TSMC is so critical. 
They're the only company on earth that can manufacture the most advanced chips. Whether the future is NVIDIA's GPUs, Broadcom's custom ASIC, Intel's neuromorphic chips, or IBM Quantum's processors, that was quite a mouthful. They all need to be manufactured by TSMC. TSMC has a 90% share in advanced chip manufacturing. They're not just ahead of their competitors, they're multiple generations ahead. Intel and Samsung are trying to catch up, but TSMC keeps extending their lead. They have the best manufacturing technology, the highest yields, which means fewer defective chips, and they've mastered advanced packaging techniques that are essential for AI chips. Think about it like this, in the California gold rush, some people got rich mining gold, but you know who really got rich? The guy who sold the picks and shovels to all the miners. TSMC is selling the manufacturing capacity to everyone in the AI race. No matter which chip architecture wins, TSMC wins. Second is Broadcom. If custom A6 become the dominant threat to NVIDIA's GPUs, Broadcom is the company that benefits the most. They just announced a $10 billion partnership with OpenAI, and they've already designed custom AI chips for Google, Meta, and Amazon. But here's what makes Broadcom special. They also have a 90% market share in Ethernet switching chips for data centers. That means 99% of all internet traffic touches at least one Broadcom chip. So even if GPUs remain dominant, Broadcom still wins from networking. Broadcom is essentially a bet on the infrastructure layer of AI. Whether data centers use NVIDIA's GPUs or custom ASICs, they still need Broadcom's networking chips to connect everything together. The third category to watch include companies like Vertif Holdings and Arista Networks. These companies provide the power systems, cooling solutions, and network equipment that data center needs regardless of which chips are inside. The beauty of these infrastructure plays is they benefit from the entire growth of AI, which is expected to 19X over the next nine years, regardless of which specific chip technology wins. As long as AI keeps growing, data centers need more power, more cooling, and more networking. Picture this, a potential client searches for what your business offers and your YouTube video appears. Before they've even booked a call, they've built trust with you, turning them into a warm lead. That's why our clients are hitting $100,000 months because YouTube turns attention into authority. If you run a business, book a call and I'll show you exactly how to make this happen.